And we welcome you back into Dodger Poke Report, where tonight we have a very, very, very special guest. As you see on your screen, Mr. Pete Hubeck. Hubeck was, was drafted in the 2021 draft this last summer in the third round. I want to thank you very much, Pete Hubeck, for coming into Dodger Poke Report. Thank you. Really appreciate you having me. Hey, I got to say, I want to start this thing. You know, I was, I was looking at your Twitter feed, and I noticed, you know, you're obviously you're from the, the Baltimore area. You're a huge Ravens fan, would that be correct? Yes, huge yeah. Ravens fan. Yeah, yeah. So, so Lamar Jackson's better than Pat Mahomes, really? I think so. I think so. <laughs> you know, I got to go with Pat Mahomes for the simple fact that he played baseball, right? You're you're a professional pitcher, right? <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I respect Pat Mahomes for you know, great baseball. I mean, he's a good baseball player, great football player, also. But um, you know, I love Lamar Jackson. Everybody in Baltimore loves him. <laughs> the Ravens have been really, really good in recent years, too. But, hey, let's get to your background. Let's talk about your story. You have a tremendous story. Talk about a guy who's had some serious mentorship in his life. Obviously, your dad's one of the administrators there at Gilman right now. He was an assistant baseball coach for Larry Sheets, who was a former Major League Baseball player. Gavin Sheets, Larry Sheets' son, is a major leaguer with the White Sox. Cal Ripken Jr.'s son, Ryan Ripken, also came through the program. So let's back it up. Let's talk about all the mentorship. I know, you know, you're one of the biggest baseball fans. You love baseball as much as anybody. Talk about all the mentorship you've had that has led you to loving baseball as much as you do. Yeah, so, I mean, I've been I've been so lucky to have, like, ever since I was little, to have just great people, mentors in baseball. I mean, um. I grew up, I mean, I grew up loving playing, loving playing baseball and everything about it. But, um, my dad, like you said, he, um, he was, he coached at Gilman for a little bit with, um, the, this coaching staff was Cal Ripken, um, Larry and, and my dad, which is, which was pretty amazing. And, um, yeah, I I would little kid, I would go to every practice, every game, just being around it so much. And, um, just the, the, um, just the, the way, the right way to play baseball that Cal Ripken, Coach Sheets, just instilled in everybody just really, really um, was one of the biggest parts of that, I think. Got to give a shout out to your mom. Rumor has it is, you know, as much as you love baseball, dad's always gone, you know, with his administrator duties, coaching duties. Mom learned how to play catch so little Mr. Hubeck could learn how to play baseball, right? Oh, yeah. We would, um, me and my mom would always be in the backyard playing catch. The, um, yeah, we we spent a lot of hours, a lot of hours playing catch. She um didn't really come from a baseball family, but um she learned, and she's 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 the biggest Dodgers fan I know right now. Oh, honestly. really? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, with 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 you being in the organization, obviously you got drafted in the third round. We'll get to draft day, what that was like for you, all the decisions you had to made to make to become a Dodger. You had so many great opportunities, you know, other than becoming a Dodger, and we'll get to that here in a minute, but. Let's go back to your days at Gilman. Obviously, it's an elite education. It's an elite school. It's just an awesome place to grow up and, and go to high school. You know, they they really teach you how to have balance in your life between sports and education, how to respect just the kind of the, the work process of life. So, you know, talk about your days at Gilman. I know that, that you won a Class A state championship there your senior year. You, you threw a complete game in the semifinals. You closed the finals. So just talk about your whole career at Gilman. Yeah, so um, I mean, my career, I had to, um, I had to coach each, um, I would have to give coach each a lot of credit for that because I came in, I came as a uh, freshman year as a catcher, and like throughout lower school, middle school, like I just felt the need, like I really wanted to be on varsity as a freshman, like that was like my biggest goal for years, and um, I tried out as a catcher. I was a catcher back then, 100, 150 pound catcher, which which isn't isn't very ideal but um I was the second string catcher and um like early in the season coach used was like hey could you could you get on the mound could throw a little bit and I was um I mean you get the ball in your hand every time just like a catcher and um I like throwing hard and when I started pitching I was like man striking people out is really fun it's a lot funner than I thought and um so he's he's the reason I started pitching and um man he he deserves a lot of that credit for sure. But um, Gilman is a school. I mean, it really taught you, taught you work ethic, like outside of baseball also. So um, classroom, you cannot be, 
Like you cannot be messing around. You can't be doing any of that. So it's a big part of my life. Well, and, and like we said earlier, you, you had a complete game in the semifinals. You had a, you closed the finals game. I know you were very close to your teammates. You loved your coaches. So talk about that experience, how you got to end your career there. Yeah, any of my career, especially um, that semifinal game was probably one of the best games of our through. Um, and I actually pitched other than the COVID season, which got which got banged for everybody. But um, we lost. I, I started the championship game freshman year and um, and sophomore year. So we, we lost both of those with a close game. And um, just coach each having enough faith and just really um, – Letting me go out the last inning, last two innings and close just meant meant so much for me. It really did. So well, that was awesome. Yeah, a lot of adrenaline, I'm sure, was running through your veins in that in that scenario. And and uh, you know, getting to see guys like Gavin Sheets and Ryan Ripkin play prepared you for that moment. I'm sure. Do you still keep in contact with those guys? I do. Um, Gavin mostly when I'm in the off season. So I've been working out with Gavin a lot. We go to the same guy to work out. So. Um, He's always pushing me. He um, it's pretty funny. I mean, he's with the White Sox, so in Arizona, we're right next to each other, which is which is really cool. And um, no, he's super hardworking and um, a great a great guy to um, like base your work ethic after for sure. Yeah, and we'll get to kind of how the the culture of the Dodgers matches exactly how you grew up at Gilman, as far as being a good person first, a good baseball player second in that order. But let's talk about, you know, as you graduate from Gilman, what an awesome opportunity you have to go play at Wake Forest for a coach in in Tom Walter, who I don't think people realize this, but in eight years, uh, in eight years, he's had, well, in the last six years, 100% of his seniors have graduated. So let's start with that, because I know that most likely was probably your number one decision uh, to go there. Gavin Sheets also went there. And you're talking about uh, over 50 uh, draft picks in the last eight years. So, I mean, this is a program in Tom Walters that graduates his kids. He gives you a chance to be seen by professional athletes. You had a full ride. So, man, you had a great situation at Wake Forest, didn't you? I did, yeah. Um, I mean, especially his parents being an educator, or my dad being an educator. Um, I mean, that was obviously some the graduation, the good school at Wake Forest that definitely stood out. But, um, I mean, with the good school, it's um, the amount of people that come through that program and play professional baseball is pretty. It's pretty amazing, especially with a small school. But um, you know, it was a tough decision, but um, I couldn't be happier. Yeah, no doubt about it. Of course, you know, when you pick up a baseball for the first time in T-ball or whatever level that you started with, everybody's goal. I don't care what you say. I mean, is to become drafted, is to get drafted someday and become a major league baseball player. So. Take us through what it was like and the decision. You know, obviously you had the great situation at Wake Forest, but you get drafted in third round. I mean, you can't turn that down. That's that's every young kid's dream. So take us through that decision. Yeah, so, um, I mean, dra- draft day was crazy. Um, I was just talking on the phone all day. Just um, It was pretty cool watching some of my friends get picked up, which was awesome to see. Um, but then it was actually kind of a funny story. I was talking with my um, agent and he called me like two picks for the Dodgers. And he was like, Hey, the Orioles are going to pick you two picks after the Dodgers. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to be an Oriole. Like, this is crazy. And um, 30 seconds for their pick is like, Hey, Dodgers might pick you here. I was like, and Dodgers and Orioles have always been my two, two favorite teams. I love watching the Dodgers. Oh, so you grew up a Dodger fan. I did. Um, The past, especially the past like three years, because, um, the Orioles, we got, I got MLB TV at home, but, um, the blackout. So I can't watch any Orioles games. I go there. So I love watching the, I watch the Dodgers every night for the past, probably two, two years. So, um, when the Dodgers picked me, that was, it was surreal. It really was. Almost like an out of body experience. I would assume, you know, that, that, you know, and if that wasn't like an out of body experience, you had a really cool moment whenever you had a FaceTime chat with Walker Bueller and Clayton Kershaw, I can only imagine how awesome that was for you, right? That was that was really special. That um, I, I mean, I, I was in shock first of all. I mean, those two guys, I look up, I've been looking up to. I mean, I watched Walker and Bueller and um, since he's at Vanderbilt, and obviously, um, 
Clayton Kershaw, I mean, Hall of Famer. And um, the thing that stood out, I guess, was just those two guys were just so, like, such nice guys. And um, that really carried over when I got to Arizona to be with the whole Dodgers. Like, they're just the whole organization, really. It's, it's good people, good players, the coaches. They really care about you. So that's – I really – that was really nice. The player development, I'm telling you, and I'm sure you've already seen it with all the analytics, all the track man, and, and all of the things that you have available to you to, to analyze all the things that you're doing. Uh, I think you've probably already found out that as great of develop, uh, a development as you had growing up under Coach Sheets, your dad, and all the opportunities you had at Gilman, it's second to none with the Dodgers. So uh, talk about – we're going to get to your stuff here in a minute, but, but just kind of talk about the organization with the Dodgers, how it fits you culturally – uh, with the kind of people that, that they like to have, good people first, and, and then the opportunities you've had to develop your game. Yeah, so I um, mean, starting off with the people there, literally from everyone who they drafted, everyone who's in the organization, to the coaches, to the front, like the, the head of just anybody in the Dodger organization there. Um, they, really, they really care. They care about the person you are, and I feel like that – definitely stood out the first time I stepped on um just their their facility and talked to their people it um it was really like a super pleasant surprise and um like I mean baseball wise I learned when I was out in Arizona for the past couple months like you learn something every day and like that's it's not an exaggeration it's it's really cool and like the more you're willing to learn the more you the more you can like pitching guys the strength guys are always that they really care and they'll they'll tell you anything you want. Did you have access to all the analytics in high school, like like uh, spin rate and and vertical drop and horizontal break and all that? Did you have access to that in high school? Honestly, not not too much. Yeah. We um, I the I started learning about a little bit of it on the summer circuit going into senior year, um, just through different scouts and um, like showcase stuff, but. Um, other than that, I never, um, never been on like a rap soda or um, like had a pitching lesson or stuff like that. So I was coming in pretty, pretty fresh and just ready to learn. So you get drafted this last summer. I'm assuming you, you finished, uh, you finished this summer at at the site there in Arizona. And then you, did you go to Instructs after that, or did, did you get to do any of that? Um, I was at Instructs. They, um, I actually really loved Instructs. They, um. They put me in. I didn't pitch. I didn't throw in games and in instructs, yeah. but it. I was in movement camp, which is basically like a strength camp, kind of like boot camp type thing. And um, we worked out. We go in the facility, work out every day, conditioning, and we got we got our bus kicked a little bit, but it was. Great. I mean, but we get we all got so much stronger just in those net those couple months. It was it was great. Well, you kind of segue. That was a good segue into one of the next questions I want to ask you or topics I wanted to talk about with you. We'll get to your stuff here in a minute and what you bring to the table as far as the pitches that you throw. But, you know, you're a guy that's that's six foot three, 170 pounds. So I would assume, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but but you have a lot of room to grow in your frame and you're already about 92, 93 on your fastball. You've hit as high as 95, but you probably sit, I'd say anywhere from 90 to 91 to 93 on average. So do you see yourself putting putting a lot of weight on that frame and adding velocity to your fastball? Oh, no doubt. So um, I actually, I got into, when I got drafted, I did the physical in LA and um, I weighed in at 165, oh. which was 6'3", 165. That's, that's not, not the best. But um, so putting, putting on weight, putting on strength was a huge thing for um, me and the strength coaches. So um little over 182 right now just still still working on hopefully get to 190 at some point in the future but um definitely just putting good muscle on and um hopefully throwing harder this season fastball is good I've, I've i've seen it on video and it rides really well at the top of the zone you have a really good ride factor i don't know anything about your spin rate i was not able to find it but i'm assuming it it's pretty good because it has pretty good ride at the top of the zone your four your, your two seam Seems to have really good sync down the zone, so you're able to you're able to change eye levels with your fastball. And but the thing that that's exciting to me about about your progress and and being in the Dodgers organization, the first thing I usually teach a pitcher is a changeup. And just watching the way that your changeup developed this last summer, 
it really seems like you're getting a really good feel for that pitch. And then I, you also throw a, a kind of a slider type pitch. So, you know, I hate to use the actual terminology of pitchers because everybody calls it things sure. differently. But but three pitch pitcher at this point, would that be accurate with, with a two seam and four seam fastball? Yes. Yeah. Three three pitches right now. Um, hopefully my plan is um, to develop a slider this this upcoming season. So I'm excited for that as well. Talk about the change up and the feel that, that you've gotten for that pitch because the, the couple of times I th- saw you throw it and you had the feel for it, it was a really dynamic pitch for you that had a lot of a vertical drop to it. Yeah. Um, so I've always, I mean, in high school, I threw a change up. It was kind of kind of difficult just because sometimes Maryland high school can't really catch up to a little faster fastballs. But um, so I came in in Arizona and um, worked with Rob Hill, a pitching pitching got pitching coordinator with the uh, Dodgers and um, we worked on the change up a lot and I just thrown in bullpens practice and then putting it to a game and um, man they like, throwing a change up is such a such an advantage it's a lot of young a lot of young guys I mean including myself like I didn't really know that they're I'm still working on it every day every time I play catch but um that's that's a, definitely a huge part of my game and a, like a big part of the future that I hope. You know, sometimes I talk to pitchers in the Dodgers organization and they say, well, the, well, the org wants them everything to ride, you know, up in the zone. They, every, they want every pitch. They don't want any of the arm side movement. They don't want any vertical drop. Then I talk to some guys and they, and they like, they like, you know, the, because they have such a high delivery, they like the vertical drop type two seam pitch. So have the Dodgers told you which way they like your fastball better at this point? Yeah. So I've been, I've been mostly almost all four seams. Okay. Part just because, um, like you said, like the ver the vertical movement is um, just like naturally pretty pretty high. Like the numbers are high on that, and um, just the pitch I can play my curveball off of as well. So um, mostly the four seam for now. We've talked about it this entire time through this organization. We're talking with Pete Hubeck, and I want to thank you so much for taking so much time with me tonight on Dodger Poke Report and letting Dodger fans get to know you uh, quite a bit better. What a cool message you have for kids because, you know, as I, as I sent you the message about as far as how this interview is going to go, you know, if there's anybody that knows the significance of being mentored and allowing people to mentor you, you know, you have, you have these kids that have all these private instructors and all these things nowadays and, and they don't really want to listen to this guy or that guy. You know, you're a guy who's had just multiple people that you've been able to, to, to go to and talk to. So for all of those kids out there, you know, I, what message do you have for them as far as, you know, being mentored by, by great baseball people and how do they become Pete Hubeck and get where you're at? I would just say have an open mind. I mean, everybody, doesn't matter who it is, has something something important you can take from them. And just just like the mutual mutual respect, just like respect others that because they have something to they got something to teach you if you're willing. And um, yeah, it's basically that. That is an awesome message, man. Just, God, that, I, I love that, that the open mind thing. That, that is, you know, because a guy that's in your situation that, like you said, I mean, in Maryland and it's cold and you're throwing 91, 92 and you got three pitches behind it, you could have easily just kind of thrown your fastball and got away with it. And, but you had an open mind to listen to all these guys to actually improve yourself, even though you had that situation available to you. So awesome message, Pete Hubeck. I just cannot absolutely – have they told you where you're going to start next year? They've not. I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Hopefully, I can't wait to see you in Double A Tulsa. I'm located in the Oklahoma area, so so uh, I, I get to see guys as soon as they get to Double A Tulsa. So I can't wait till you, till you get there and uh, and I get to see you there. But hey, Pete, again, I want to thank you so much for joining me on Dodger Poke Report. You have a huge fan, and I'm just telling you, as this guy gets, you know, as he adds muscle to the frame, and he already has, you know, the three pitches and the big fastball and and a great curveball and the, and the changeup that, that has a lot of bite to it, watch out for this guy. This is a big-time, big-time, big-time prospect. So thank you again, Pete Hubeck. Thank you. Really appreciate it.